Hey guys, Luna here, and welcome back to Arcadia's Fallen. Let's just get right back into it. We just started chapter two, which is kind of interesting that each of the different things that, um, each of the chapters have different things about them. So I'm kind, faithful, accepting, and confident. Which is interesting. You're weak with, with a start, breathing heavily as the mist of the nightmare fades from your vision. Mime is fast asleep, or is she? Do spirits even sleep? You're not sure, but she doesn't even stir as you rise from your bed, the covers feeling damp and suffocating. You step outside your room to breathe. Your little quest comes to a halt, Trevor, when you spot another resident awake at this late hour. Victoria slips out the front door of the shop, of the shop and you, just st you stand for a moment, weighing your options before you decide to follow. Staying as quiet as possible, you follow Victoria out into the alleyway behind the shop. Victoria. <laughs> I am ready to hear your report. You listen in as Victoria relays the day's activities to her commander. This is where we stand. I believe our next course of action should be to file for a warrant of the Goldner Estate, to retrieve the sword and... Huh. That would hardly be a swift solution, would it, Victoria? To file such a request, and get it approved, might take weeks. And let's not forget, we'd need to disclose the reason why this magical artifact would have been entrusted to you, instead of simply being destroyed. But the... Protocol. Hmm. Sometimes we find ourselves in situations where alternative measures must be taken. If what this outlander says is true, and the situation can be resolved by completing this ritual, then that is now your highest priority. With all due respect, Commander, this magic... We know nothing about it. It's as chaotic as it comes. I if the Paragon knew about this... I have already informed him of the situation. And he agrees with my assessment. What? The Paragon agrees. The sacrifice is worth it. To keep the peace. Things are not as stable in the capital as they appear to be. An incident like this could cause a lot of unnecessary stress. I won't get into political details. Just know that this is by far the better option. <laughs> Politics. <laughs> do you understand your orders? I do. Very well. I will be awaiting your report of a successful mission, then. That is certainly something else. The image darkens, and you can no longer see Victoria's expression in the dark. Approach. You step out from your hiding spot and approach Victoria, who lets out a sigh. <sighs> and just how long have you been standing there? Long enough to notice your boss is a jerk. <laughs> and long enough to learn your boss isn't gonna win any humanitarian awards. That's... Don't pretend to know the situation. Athea has her reasons. <sighs> Victoria lets out a heavy sigh. It seems there's no other way than to go through with this break-in. Damn it, this is not how I wanted this to go. Does seem to be the best option we have. Actually... We do have limited options, after all. <sighs> I won't disagree, but this is not how things should work. I do not want to be the judge of who or what deserves punishment. People's opinions are flawed. I am flawed. The system ensures that I don't make a mistake. Systems made by people, too. About that. Systems imperfect, after all. If we all agree that murder was okay, then that would be a law. But it wouldn't be right. I think being able to assess your own morals and stand up to the people in power when you think they are wrong is a true form of courage. Victoria is silent for the longest time, mulling over your words. No. 
I don't agree with you. How can a society work without any rules? Why should my morals be more valid than someone else's? <laughs> Victoria sighs. Why are we even discussing this? No matter, go back to bed. I have work to do. Will you be okay? Um. Going out on your own? Huh? Your concern is touching, but I'll be fine. You better not oversleep tomorrow, so go back inside. Victoria disappears down the street, and you return to your own room with a sigh. <sighs> As you get up to face a new day, the sound of the valley making up is strikingly normal, but things are not what they used to be. Your mind is no longer lingers on the mundane issues, like your up-and-coming graduation or the flower festival. Instead, it dances around these strange new companions you have gathered and the quest ahead of you. I don't know why I'm yawning so much, just like before. I'm too. Maybe it's the music that's making me sleepy because it's such relaxing music. Mime seems to. Too seems to be in a more serious mood. She is sitting by the broken window, staring out into the street with a fairway look in her eyes. Penny, for your thoughts? Hi. It's gotten you so wrapped up in the thoughts this early. Hi. Good morning. Nothing that interesting, really. <laughs> About that. This really went and took a turn on us, didn't it? Ancient spirit prison, huh? This all so much bigger than I thought. I think just because you turned out okay, it didn't really occur to me just how many people would get hurt by this. Hey. 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 Music is so relaxing. How many more? How many are going to end up like that kid, Kim, losing someone they care about to the madness? I wonder. You tackled the mission with Ronin yesterday so confidently. You didn't seem to doubt for even for a second that we should handle the situation. Meanwhile, all I could think about was how I could get away. You have to try your best. About that. It's important that we try. We won't be perfect, but it's still better than doing nothing. Maybe, but... Then what about us? Are we just going to face the danger head on? I wonder if we'd be brave enough when it matters. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that's not really important right now. We should meet up with the others. It doesn't take long before your group of companions have gathered in the small shop. Some more awake than others. Victoria is sitting in the corner sipping on a coffee, looking a bit haggard like she didn't sleep at all. Are you okay, Victoria? You look a bit... What our dear spirit friend is trying to say is, you look like you have been coughed up by a cat. Victoria's eyes twitches. I'm fine. I was up all of last night investigating this Goldner's mansion. I'm afraid Anne's guess was correct. The place is heavily guarded, and I sensed magic somewhere inside as well. Traps? Or something else? That man is quite a hypocrite, isn't he? Hating magic, but then turning around and using it to protect himself. I agree. However, that doesn't make the situation any less... difficult. What about you, our tall friend? Anything useful to add about how you escaped that place? As an agent of my people, you can imagine that I'm not entirely without skill myself. Going back in, however, if it wasn't due to the gravity of our situation, I would never consider it. So it must be really close then, based on that assessment, since it seems to be heavily guarded. It's a great risk, but we have no choice. We need that artifact now. Failure is not an option, which means I'm going to need your assistance. All of you. Wait, what? I need your help. There's a moment of stunned silence as the words sink in. I've got to admit, I did not expect that. Did the knight herself really just ask for our help? <gasps> Does this mean you actually think of us as a team? Oh, this is so exciting! Don't get ahead of yourself. I still think the lot of you are dangerous individuals who must be watched. However... What do you need us to do? What do you need? 
We need a way in. We need to deal with any guards and traps we encounter. And we need to locate the artifact. I'm sure someone working for Goldner would know where he'd store an artifact like that. I've seen his guards hang around the tavern at night. A bit of friendly eavesdropping might be enlightening. As for any magical items we might come across, I'm sure our resident Tinker Mage will be quite capable of handling that. Wait, what? He wanted to know more about this Outlander artifact as well. Did you not? Well, yes, but... Uh, if that's settled, perhaps we can use alchemy to get inside? It worked quite well down in the tunnels, and Elizabeth might have some ideas if we go ask her. That's... actually not a bad plan, Mime. Really? That's great! Ooh, this is so exciting! It's starting to sound like we're going on some grand adventure together! Do we need a team name? Legendary heroes always have a team name. Something cool like the Valiant Victors, or or maybe the Demon Detectives. I... Demon Detectives sound cool. I think Demon Detectives sounds great. Thank you. I quite like that one myself as well. No. It's certainly unique. I'm not sure I'm following this weird topsider tradition. If we're a team, can I then veto this? I veto this. <sighs> you guys are no fun. So, you really are a hunter, huh? Former hunter. But yes. What about it? <gasps> what was it like? Did you save a lot of people? What is the biggest demon you've ever fought? You are oddly excited about this. Why wouldn't I be? Hunters are the keepers of balance in this world. The sword that shields us from untamed magic and demons! You shouldn't put such faith in fairy tales, Anne. Uh, hey, wait! What did she mean by that? Let's head to the flower shop, I guess. Uh, look for Anne. You search for Anne and it takes you to Quinn's shop, and the florist gives you a friendly smile as you enter. Hey there, you two. Welcome back. Anne mentioned you'd be dropping by. She's just in the back. Just be careful where you step in there, okay? Right. That sounds kind of ominous. Anne moved in. <laughs> Take it, Anne made herself at home. We re rearranged the, one of the storerooms so she can use it as a workshop while she's here. She's done an impressive job, but I tend to get a bit nervous around Tinker's magic. Too many sparks of moving parts. <laughs> Anyways, you, go, you, go, you should go take a look yourself. Let's go! Right, excuse us. Curiosity and dread settles in your stomach as you try. You make it out to the back and enter what was a storeroom, now transformed into a makeshift workshop. Weird bits and pieces and tools and gadgets are scattered about everywhere, and a huge stack of books is towering ominously in the corner. In the middle of it, scribbling away, sits Anne, not looking up from her notes even as you enter. Ah, you two. Glad you could make it. You've settled in quickly. <laughs> it's like a proper workshop in here already. Actually... And most of the things my things delivered in advance. I needed all my tools at my disposal to properly decipher this mystery, but enough of that. She closes her notes with a snap and hops over to you, eyes glinting with anticipation. Let me have a look at that locket. I'm looking forward to hearing the results. Okay. Here you are. Excited to find what you find out. I'm a genius. Thank you. I'm confident this will be great. You hand the locket to Anne, who makes a muffled sound of excitement as she looks it over, forgetting all about you and Mime as she rushes over to her desk. Anne brings out some different tools and begins poking and prodding away at the locket. She's deeply focused and doesn't seem to register at you at all. Um... This, look like, this looks like it might take a while. Should we sit down? You find an empty space somewhere on the floor and sit down in the meets. Mime makes a game out of stacking books and... For a while, she dozes off against the pile, leaving you to watch Anne in silence. 
Her face is scrunched up and acutely in thought, and notices she taps her foot lightly when she writes, but stops when she falls even deeper in thoughts. When she tinkers with a locket, her hands move swiftly and efficiently. It's almost uncanny just how precise she moves. Maybe that's what tinker magic looks like. I'm a genius. After what must have been almost an hour of silence, the mage finally puts down her tool, stretches her arms out above her head with a grin. Okay, I think I've got it. Huh? What? Got what? Huh? Mine wakes up with a start, lushing as she rubs the sleep from her eyes. Wait, what have you got? That's great. So this is indeed a spirit locket similar to the ones used in the past. No one uses them anymore since they want an energy of spirits, which is taboo. Oh. Also, there kind of aren't a lot of us left. The demons you've collected aren't as much shield away as they are simply absorbed into the locket's power source. That means every demon you collect has, in f has in fact added to the total power of the locket. Quite fascinating. As long as it keeps them sealed away. So... This isn't what I was expecting, but I suppose that if they are kept sealed away from people, they're still a better, that's still a better solution. Oh. I mean, yeah, keeping them away from hurting people is important. Sophia's a bit wrong, though, doesn't it? Using them as some sort of power source? Actually... As far as I can see, you haven't actually trapped them into the locket's potential yet. Well, that's certainly interesting. I would have expected them to already been used as a power source, but who's to say, I suppose? <laughs> you've been completely, uh, you've been using a completely different power source. She looks to Mime, who blinks, pointing to herself. Huh? Well, uh, yes, me. I suppose I've been the one helping you since we've always felt that glowing connection when we see one of those bad guys. Uh, way. Fascinating. You've been using your own magic to help Lunas all this time, yet you do not feel yourself weakening? No way! Well, no. I feel completely fine. Anne taps her chin with her pen before noting down a few more things in her book. So... Spirit alchemy is already a known school of the arcane, so I'll not learn anything new poking my nose down that trail. The fact that you have relied on another scarce power source that will completely deplete over time isn't fixing anything, just creating a new dependency. No, the interesting aspect is still remains you- is, still remains you, mine. Whoa! Me? Actually... My theory is that since you two are soulbound and not connected through the locket, the energy you channel from mine isn't draining her. Of course, it, it, if you were to do something very challenging, I'm sure both of you would be able to feel the strain, but you would recover, just like the mage recovers after using their powers. This is amazing. In short, your connection has given Lunas the same magical potential a mage possesses. I am a mage? <gasps> does, it, does that mean I could cast spells as well? Hmm? I suppose with the right training, you could be able to use magic just as much as like mage you do, using the lock as a lock it as a focus, of course. But that's just a theory. Yikes! We really need to find a way for the two of us to get unbound again. You do realize? Well, I wouldn't recommend that now, since we still need you two to be connected to see a way the demons will undoubtedly be come across. Spirit magic, soul binding, create mages. Those all scream taboo, but I must admit, finding a way to equip non-mages with magical potential would certainly change how we all think about magic. If magical items didn't need a power source, but people themselves could just power them on their own. Such a discovery, even if not put into practice, would be quite an achievement. Enough to grant me my title for sure. Someone's gonna be useless. <sighs> Well, in theory, I could see it, this being a solution. There's no way someone isn't going to abuse this. <sighs> I just provide the research that says it's possible. What humanity decides to do with this knowledge is not my problem. Of course you're responsible for what you create. You... You can't just dismiss your, dismiss your responsibility like that. Sounds to me like you're just making excuses because you don't want to admit anything might bad, my, anything bad might come out of this. Is your, is your professional title worth that much to you? I can't believe this. You have no idea what that title means to me. You don't know me or what I've been through to get this far. 
If, if I don't claim this discovery, someone else will eventually, so I'm not gonna hold myself back just because the rest of humanity is a bunch of morons. She aims you back the lockets. That's all I wanted to research for today. Thank you for being cooperative. I'll be calling upon you again when I need to learn more. <laughs> I think that's our cue to go. You and my gleam. On your way out, you notice Anne returning to her lower mountain of books, massaging arms with a pained expression. But tell me, Anne, what was life like at the Academy? Why do you ask? I thought you were confident the Academy was a horrible mage prison. Well, yes. But that doesn't mean I know how you felt growing up there. I thought your perspective would be... valuable to consider. That's... rather pragmatic of you. Very well. I'll bite. The Academy is a wonderful place. A safe haven for mages to study and research without fear of the ignorant masses who wish us harm. Everything's in perfect balance. Just like Izith intended. Does that answer your question? It certainly confirms that they brainwashed the lot of you. That's for sure. <sighs> That's it. I'm done talking to you. Quinn's flower shop is warm and pleasant. The scents of flesh flowers indicate the new shipment might have arrived. You are, however, not the only one in the shop. You recognize the guard from yesterday talking with Quinn at the counter? Here you go. These flowers will be sure to make your fiancé smile. Uh, I'm glad. I know they will. It's been a while since I brought her any. After all, thank you, honestly. I'm so... Listen, I'm not so good at this, but I realized last night that I'd let some baseless rumors get to me, and I wanted to apologize. What? Oh dear, there's no need for that. You see. But there is, though. I might not have said it to your face, but I thought some pretty horrible things, and I don't know what came over me. There's no excuse. I'm sorry. Thank you. I thank you. I accept your apology. Thank you. Thank you. We'll all be off. Time to present these to Louise. Have a nice day. The man walks past you, giving you a pleasant smile before he leaves. It didn't look like he recognized you at all. About that. It's probably because we defeated Ronan yesterday. By weakening the demon host, he probably lost his influence over that guy and returned to normal. Just like all those other people during the fire. I'm glad. That's great. Maybe there's a hope for Ronan yet? Um... I won't go that far yet. There's quite a difference between being in a frenzy and actually being possessed. I do agree. It, it, it's good news, though. We did something good. Welcome back. Welcome back, Lunas. How's your mission going? The man who bought the flowers. About that. Ah, yes. Quite sweet, wasn't he? I haven't had anyone come and apologize to my face like that before. Oh, how refreshing. Maybe there's hope for me in this village yet. You're very kind, Quinn. <laughs> glad, to, glad to see it worked out. Thank you. Thank you, sweetheart. I'm quite happy with how it turned out as well. I'm not going to lie, at first I was kind of hurt. He's been one of my most loyal customers, after all. But if he made an effort to better himself and even came here to offer his apologies, well then I wanted to support that. The world has had enough hate in it already, and I always found it exhausting to hold a grudge. I agree, hate is exhausting. I'm glad. I wouldn't want to go around carrying that kind of grudge myself. <laughs> Forgi forgiveness is almost like magic in its own right. If it isn't much, but a thing you can only control, and that is sense has its power. I'm glad it turned this turned out well. So, how's testing going? Tell me about... Did you learn anything from the samples I brought you? <laughs> yes, I should have known you would ask about that. The answer is both a yes and a no. I'm confident after a communing with the soul that it's either that it's you with a no fire and the branches told me no diseases can kill them either. It's quite strange, as they, as if the very life of them was drawn out in an instant. They felt no pain nor fear. One moment they are living, and the next they are not. Must get to the bottom of this. I'll do it. We'll have to figure out what happened. I'm sure it's connected to the demons and everything else going on. Ah, oh, so that's how it is. It does seem to be connected. Such powerful magic doesn't just show up out of nowhere uninvited, after all. 
It's definitely not anything that would ever be approved at the academy. But that is to say, I, uh, that's all I can say for now. I hope it proves helpful. Thank you. I'll be off then. That's all I need for now. See you later, Quinn. Take care. You're always welcome. Take care. We could go to the market or could go home. Um, let's go to the tavern, I suppose. In the evening, you and mine make your way to the tavern and hunt down information for Michael. You find the mage sitting alone at the table in the corner. What's the plan? So... <laughs> it's quite simple. Mostly involves sitting and waiting. Many of the townsfolk frequent this place after hours to complain and drink their sorrows away. It does seem kind of crowded in here. I notice those working for Goldner fellows seem to have more quarrels to drink away than others. Let's try and listen in and see if we can learn a thing or two. It's a great idea. Okay. Great, great thinking, Michael. Thank you. I've been known to be brilliant on an occasion. Now, as for passing the time, the mage smiles, uh, pulls out a deck of cards, and starts shuffling with an easy smile. How about a friendly game while we wait? Careful, I'm quite good. <laughs> you don't know what you're getting into, Sophia and Michael. Better keep your coin close. Oh, this will be good. Confidence, eh? Excellent. Let's have a match then. Michael deals the cards, and Mime sits off to the side, watching you two curiously as you play. As lights dim outside, more and more patrons make their way into the tavern, but n none seem to be Godel's men so far. You put down your first card, and Mime leans o in over your shoulder to get a closer look. <laughs> How pretty. Are all the cards painted like this? Indeed. I got this deck from an artist in a Reyes as a reward for... Oh, that's another story entirely. They're quite spectacular, especially like his careful attention to the symbolic meaning behind each card. Hmm. Huh? Is it meaning to it? Isn't it just a picture of a coin? Let's see. Once upon a time, humans believed cards like these held magical properties. They would be re I was about to say divination, like divination and tarot and all that. Because my, my, uh, well, my dad and I have work been working on a tarot set for D&D which can be used as playing cards or as divination. They would be read as the meaning behind the cards as to take a sign of divination. Such things are illegal now, of course, so the symbols that were once commonly known are now largely forgotten. Just one more thing the empires empires destroyed. <gasps> Not he all humans are like that, though. <laughs> I bet Lunas knows some of the meanings. She's really smart, after all. Thank you. <laughs> it's very kind of you to say, Mime. You're the best! And I'm just being honest. You're the smartest human I know, after all. Mm -hmm. How many humans do you know, Mime? <laughs> That's besides the point. <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> I am curious now, though. Lunas has been quite adept at subverting my expecta expectations as far. I wonder how much, much of these own meanings have survived. Would you care to put it to a test? And, a pr and if is there a prize if I get it right? I wonder. It p depends. Is there a prize if I pass? Oh, really? That's an excellent point. Why don't I make it interesting? Uh, if you win this little game, I'll tell you a secret of mine. Curiosity is a great motivator, no? Get ready to spill the beans. <laughs> Prepare yourself, Michael. I'm gonna make you spill all of your secrets when we're done. Let's see. I don't believe the deck has that many cards, but very well. Let's begin. Why don't we start with the card that you drew, that drew our dear Mimi's attention? A coin, a card most associated with wealth, but do you think perhaps know its original meaning? Trust. I wonder. The meaning is trust. A coin is worthless if no one trusts in its value. <laughs> I'm surprised you knew that one. Put our trust in the fact that possessing one of these worthless discs will allow us to trade again. Humans are quite fascinating, no? Michael shuffles a card and then draws these, putting two of them face up and the last one face down. The bird gods. I believe you're familiar with the first two. The sparrow, patron of heroes' tailors, and the raven, harbinger of death. 
These brothers have a third sibling. Do you know who? I think it's the Nightingale. Actually... It's the Nightingale, isn't it? Sure thing. Correct answer. For someone who isn't supposed to know about the old religion, you're quite good at this. The Nightingale is the favorite of the, is my favorite of bird gods. The patron of storytellers, so feared by that even the Empire doesn't dare with mess with bards in performance working under his banner. Michael deals another hand and humps himself, picking out one of the cards and placing it down face up. How curious. Who? Mine moves to peer over Michael's shoulder, her golden eyes wide as she takes in the tall humanoid creature with a deer skull for a head. Hmm. What is this? I don't... I'm torn between the King of Nightmares and the Father of the Forest. I'm gonna go with the Father of the Forest. So... He's the Father of the Forest. One of the gods of the old religion. Well, I'll be damned. That's right. Despite his frightening appearance, it is said he's a gentle god, a steward of the creatures in the woods. Hmm. Was it, Mime? Do you like this card? You see... It's difficult to explain, but I kind of just feel sad looking at this. But also happy? It's so strange. Here. Well, if you like it so much, you can keep it for now. Well, I'll be damned. Uh, God, game has concluded after all, and I must submit defeat. You have proven to be quite proficient at this, Lucas. Hmm. Well, you promised a secret. Interesting. Mm, I suppose I did. Which one to pick, though? <laughs> I have never learned how to whistle. Come on. What? That's not a secret. Hmm. To me it is. I'm quite embarrassed about this revelation. Can't you see me blushing? <laughs> Someone without shame can't blush. <laughs> Ouch. Well, I still had fun. <laughs> Secret or not, I still had fun playing. Interesting. It's very insightful. I do enjoy having my expectations subverted. Michael's eyes flick into the door as his lips drop into a smirk. This has been quite a pleasant distraction, but I believe our quarry just arrived. We should listen in. Michael motions subtly as, as the booth behind you is filled with three burly guys, each with a tank and a veil. <laughs> I can't believe the boss had us act as delivery men. I thought we were supposed to be to do guard duty, not heavy lifting. Well. Oh, I can't expect those scrawny mages to pull their weights. <laughs> I'm not getting a bad feeling about using magic like that, even if it is from the capital. What if the safest haunt likes some, some kind of witch magic? What? Really? What? I suppose I suppose it's not a problem since the boss isn't letting anyone into that precious office. I just wonder what kind of stuff he's gonna hide in that safe if he's resorting to using magic one to keep it locked away. Watch your mouth. Neither, hey buddy. Let's give it some serious advice as your elder. You wanna keep working for Corner? You stop asking stupid questions like that. We guard the place and no one's business when he's hiding in there. You understand? Hmm. I understand. Michael empties his glass wide. Go flying with a slice of work. How curious. It seems like our evening has concluded. Let's return home, shall we? You leave the tavern. The cold air is stark contrast to the toy boisty, toasty bars you shiver. Well done! Sigarna is hiding something. It seems his office is a place for us to go. Interesting. That would appear to be the case, but he recently installed some magic safe to keep from the capital. You must recognize the value of the artifact you saw from Caden. This could be trouble, but at least for now, we know, so we can prepare. Well, isn't uh, this neat? All in all, I say this is a little excursion of ours as a fool. Without spying, it was almost a date. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if we took away the spy element, this would almost have been a pleasant night out. Oh, really? I happen to have a weakness for dates with a bit of dangerous tension, so to say. So let's do this again sometime, no? Here you are, mine. This is... a sweet roll? But why? I noticed you were shooting the baking stall longing glances earlier. Given you can't actually reveal yourself, I figured I could swipe it for you. Thank you so much! You're so kind! Wait, you did... pay for this? Right? <laughs> well, you can't expect me to do more than one good deed in a day, can you? Michael? 
why am I not surprised? Check in with Kaden. You can't find Kaden anywhere in the shop. Instead, you went into Elizabeth near the storage room, looking troubled. Welcome back. Ah, oh, Lunas, there you are. Do you have a moment? I just forced our newest guest back to bed so he could rest properly. He was exhausted even if he did hide it well. It's clear his stay with Goldner was far from pleasant, and his run-in with Ronan wasn't much better. I have the recipe ready for a potion that might help him recover faster. Can you be a DN, go make it for me, what, and give it to him? Of course. I'll do it. Right away. Thank you, dear. I've written down the recipe here. Oh, it's the healing potion. Square, square, and yes, yeah, so it's not there. Square, square, and I need an F. That's well done. Make the potion for Caden. You enter the storage room that's been hastily rearranged into an extra guest room. There are no windows and the walls are lined with shelves. It's easy to make out the glowing lines of Caden's arms in the dark. The cot he's sleeping in is a far cry from a proper bed, but by the look of it, of how he's snoring away quietly, it's miles better than whatever conditions Goldart was keeping him in. I think I'm gonna gently wake him. Hi. Hey, Caden, are you awake? Call out gently, and the bright aura's eyes shoot open. Whom? <laughs> that lander sits up quickly and groans. It's what Elizabeth told you is true. He's probably feeling like a bag of rocks right now. S sorry. Oh no. I didn't mean to startle you. Are you okay? Here, here, I brought you a potion. You stammer, holding him the potion. Caden blinks, rubbing his shoulders gingerly. Hey, I see. Thank you. So I just still not used to you being people so dark. Guess we all look weird to you. Huh? Guess that would make sense. You probably look pretty outlandish to you. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend. Sorry, are, are you offended? It's all so confusing. <sighs> How do you properly communicate like this? It'll get easier. <laughs> I'd be confusing right now, but I'm sure you're managed. You're already doing great, honestly. Thank you. That is a comforting thought. How are you feeling? So... How are you doing, Caden? You look a bit... <laughs> rough. I'll be fine. You don't have to worry. I refuse to slow down our mission. Please don't push yourself. Um... You'll be fine even if you take your time to recover properly. <sighs> you say that, but never mind. What about your markings? Tell me about... I've never met an outlander before. These markings are is just what are they? These markings are veins of magic that run through my body. My people are born with them, and they're as natural to me as your faces to you. Magic? Really? Are they magic? Does that mean you're a mage? Well... I've never studied the art of magic, but all outlanders are capable of using it to some extent. Like the ritual, I... Well, there's no reason to dwell on that. Communication? What do you mean? You mentioned that I was difficult to understand because I don't have markings. How does that work exactly? Do you talk with your markings? How does this... It's a bit difficult to explain. The magic in our skin reacts to bursts of emotions. Some might be able to stifle the reaction, but to most it's an automatic response beyond our control. These visible cues, therefore, give us a clear indication of an outlander, outlander's state of mind. We use them to read each other, especially in the dark where body language, body language is, well, not available. Given the potion, so... brought you to help you to recover faster. You hand the potion over and Caden observes the liquid thick liquid curiously. Huh? You're an alchemist? How curious, I've never seen an alchemy used in practice before. Sorry, it's the best we got. Sorry. The town isn't 
big enough to have our own healer. Even if we did, given the current situation, we couldn't even bring you, so... I see. Hey, apologies. I didn't mean to come across as dissatisfied. Very grateful for your help in the potion. I just... I just don't know who to trust. Like, like war. Batlander uncorks the bottle and downs the potion one go before you can say anything. His amazed face immediately scrunches off as if... <laughs> this is an experience for... Um, <coughs> it's definitely an experience. Thank you for the potion and for talking with me. Between you and Elizabeth, the watchful's eyes, I'm sure I'll be back in good spirits before we make an attempt at getting the artifact back. No problem. I'm glad. I mean, I hardly did anything, but you, you know, you're not nervously feeling your cheek turn your cheeks warm. Kane suddenly takes a step closer, observing your face curiously. Huh? I suppose the dags do change colors, well, albeit rather subtly. How curious! What? No, must be the lighting. Um. I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh boy, will we look at the time? I think I should go do stuff somewhere else. Right. See you around, Kate. Uh -huh. But I... You rush off and leave a very confused Kate behind. So, how is freedom treating you, my friend? Better than the chains, for sure. But it's still rather stifling. Getting tired of fighting in the shadows, are we? It can't be helped. If I act carelessly and am discovered again... Discovered being the key word here. You know, I do happen to have quite a bit of experience with hiding in plain sight. I believe it's a little easier for you to blend in. Have you seen my clothes? I think I can work around a bit of glowing skin. Victoria is not going to approve. I again will refer back to the word discovered. But of course... If you are not curious about how the town looks from outside this little shop... Okay. Let's go. Talk to Kaden, see if there's anything else left. Find Kaden standing by the window in the shop looking out at the people walking past. How are you feeling? Hi. Thank you. I'm alive and grateful for that, but this is not how I imagined things would go when I left my home weeks ago. I'm so shocked. Honestly, this is a, that honestly that is a problem that simple would be difficult. This well, that honestly that a problem this simple would be this difficult to solve. Uh, solve. That's me and Eddie for you. <laughs> yeah, you human sense. Well, it's. Is this that my pe own people are not at fault in this either? We should have reacted sooner and much sooner, but Kaden returns his gate to the outside, lightly reaching up to tap his fingers against the glass. I have spent the entirety of my life in my home in the mountains. I have read about the sky and sun, about clouds and stars. They are even more impressive in person than I could have ever imagined. However, you humans do not seem to care for it. No one barely gives it a glance. And you all hide away in these houses with brick and glass obscuring its beauty. Why? Just wait till you see the rain. Actually... Trust me, when the rain comes, you'll be happy for the glass windows. Really? Rain, huh? Another thing I've yet to experience. Guess the novelty wears off when this is the environment you grow up in. Perhaps you would feel the same when you come to visit my home deep in the grounds. If that's true, then the only way to experience this wonder is to travel to someplace new. Is that an invitation? I wonder. You should know that I, if I come to visit your home, I expect a grand tour. <laughs> If we exceed in this mission, then I'll you much more than a tour of my home. Let's hope we get the chance. I'll be looking forward to it. So tell me about your home. Tell me about... You know... 
first of all, we don't call them the Outlands, much like we don't call ourselves the Outlanders. The mountain regions of the West that we call our call home is Drakenheim, home of the dragons. My people are the Ijama, and we call your people the Drags. We are reserved people, proud, rare, we stay from the mountains we call home. There's no need to. The ground beneath the mountain is, mountains is rich. We sometimes trade with the drags in the plains, but we rarely, but only rarely does anyone ever, other than the Nightwalkers leave our home for the outside. Your markings? I have some questions. <laughs> can imagine. What do you wish to know? The colors? So... I'm wondering about the colors. Yours seem to be ma blue mainly, but sometimes they shift. Is that how it works for all of you? Actually... Well, the change happens to all of us, at least those who can't control their emotions. The, ba the base colors vary, though. Blue is one of the more common ones. Does the base color mean something? Huh? Well... Some believed so. There's a prevalent superstition among some of my people that certain skills and personality traits can be attributed to our resting hue. Those with red hues are more aggressive, green make for better leaders, yellows are lighthearted, that sort of thing. What does blue mean? Hmm? Rebellion is wanderlust? <laughs> More like level-headed and rational, so yeah, not that, not that accurate. There are some who believe... Uh, some, there are some who benefit from such beliefs. Elders who guide the young based on their hue. Matchmakers who are paid to gauge romantic cap capabilities. I suppose some people just yearn to be told who they are by someone else. The Dax? What do you mean? Call us Dax, what does that mean? Actually... Some believe it, it, it is an abbreviation of day people. The Ijam are the light people, and the Himam up north are the sky people. All three are people, or humans, which f makes it rather confused to us when Udags use humans to refer to yourselves. The Him? Huh? Who are the Himmen? Well... I doubt you ever met one. If you have, there are people living in the mountains far up to the north. They used to travel quite a lot, trading with the old Dag kingdoms. After your empire was formed, however, they retreated to their home and closed their borders. I have never met one myself, but I heard they're free-spirited and proud people. Some even say that they grew wings so they could fly among the eagles, so it's hard to tell if it's just true or exaggeration. So how can we all be human? I wonder... Uh, how can we all be human, though, when we're in different races? Actually... It's only the Dags who believe that. Both the Jones and Humans hold records that our three people were once seen, the humans. Though, that was a long, long time ago. That, does that mean I could glow, too? Learn to glow as well. What? No. I just like... I just like that our dreams crashed. The more time I spent looking among your people, the more I realize our two societies look at the world differently. It's unsettling that something that's such a clear fact to me isn't so for many. Let's talk about it. Let's get back to I'll work. be off then. I'll be here if you need me. I'll see you later then. I must admit, I'm a bit envious of that invisibility spell you use, Mime. To disappear from sight even in bright daylight. Not even the Nightwalkers can do that. It's not really that great since it only works on non-Magi humans, but it beats having to hide away all day. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's okay. It was my own recklessness that landed me in this situation, after all. Hopefully, once all of this is over, I'll have the chance to explore the world of daylight on my own. I hope so, too. If you want to, I'll share all the interesting spots I found with you. <laughs> that sounds great, actually. I'm looking forward to it. We find Elizabeth in the shop, and she looks up from the book she was reading as soon as you approach. So that's how it is. So Hugh, you and the others are heading out to do something illegal. I need your help. About that... We're going to need a way inside Goldner's mansion without being detected. I see. That is my understanding, yes. 
Okay, well, I have, may have something that you can use. And definitely sound seems dangerous. There's a highly secret recipe in mine. You don't sell this in the shop. Potion of visibility. I was wondering if this old brain could remember this, but I managed to note all of it down. This potion allows the one consuming it to pass by unnoticed for about an hour. Gold nurse goons won't notice a thing. This will work perfectly. That's great. This is just what we need. How do you make it? <sighs> oh, there's a catch, just like with everything else. The potion demands ingredients we do not currently have in stock. Quinn might be able to supply us with some, but we might have to get, be a bit creative to have we obtain the rest. I have uh, the list of ingredients here, so take it to Quinn. They might have ideas about where to find the rest as well. When you've collected it all and you're ready to go, come see me. The potions must be consumed soon after it's made, so you should have made all the other, upper, other preparations before this. Of course, I'll still be here to assist you should you, so should you wish to do some regular alchemy training. I'm sure Quinn has stocked up on new ingredients by now, so we should be able to make, look into the making even with even more new recipes. I have some questions. Actually, I see. Why have you never taught me this? I wonder. If you knew this recipe, then why have you never taught me? <sighs> well, this potion's not exactly part of the standard al alchemist portfolio. My intention and ambition were always to educate you so you have to never use it anything like this, but things have changed. This is why now I share this with you. Are there, uh, are there any other neat potions I should know about? So... Like a go-away demon spray or a fixed broken magical seal glue? <laughs> Trust me, if I had solutions to those, then those would be the first ones to know. <laughs> How did you discover this potion? Tell me about... This can't be something you found in any old recipe book. I see. It's a simple enough recipe, and that, that's a simple enough question to answer, as I was the one who made the recipe. Why would you make, want to make something like this? <laughs> what kind of mischief prompted you to make a potion like this? Letherus, grant me strength. Oh, no, I'm not falling for that. You do not need any more inspiration to spur you on. So, secrets stay with me. As for how it was made, alchemy, at least, is kind of a practice in the Empire. It's not as ancient as you might think. It must have been around your age when the first whispers of spirit alchemy began circulating. There was a great deal of experimenting done in those early years, and I have always been a curious soul, so I made quite a few discoveries of my own. Nowadays, though, such experimental brews are not considered proper magic anymore, and therefore must remain a secret. That's all for now. To practice. Are there any books that I have? Looks like nothing new. I want to press. Uh, that's it for now. I'll be off then. Good luck. As you leave the shop and find Kim waiting for you outside, the small kid's ring is in hands nervously. Hi! Did you find anything? So I was just wondering how it went last night. Did you find anything about my brother? We found him, You but see. We really couldn't do much. Sorry. No need to apologize. It's not your fault this happened. I just hope that... Well, as long as he's still out there, there's still hope, right? Kim leaves and the door to the shop opens. Mine poking her head out. Oh... Poor kid, I wonder if there's some way we can separate his brother from the demon that possessed him, huh? I mean, if we can do that with him, that might also help the two of us get separated. It's not a bad idea. I see. We should continue to look at this. Thank you! Glad do you agree. We should do our best. Let's do our best. Okay? You are rather expressive compared to the other Outlanders I've met, Caden. You've... dealt with my people before? The Hunters sometimes did business with the Nightwalkers. I've never spent much time with them myself, but even from afar, you get the impression that they're a stoic group. <laughs> to put it mildly... What was that? <laughs> Nothing. Um, my, what interesting topsider architecture. 
I'll just go take a look at that. What in the world? <laughs> Honestly, I'm not that surprised. Is there anything else here? Welcome. That's that's all for now. I'll be good luck. I th I've noticed you staring out the window sometimes. You should be more careful other people don't see you. Oh, right, of course. I'll be careful. Uh, what were you even doing there? You were just staring out at the streets? I never got the chance to properly explore this place. This is my first time experiencing a surface town, and I'm itching to explore it. You're also new to this place, aren't you? Don't you feel the urge to go look around? No. That was a... decisive answer. Why should I waste my time? There's nothing of interest to me here, and I'll be leaving soon. <laughs> There's always something to be learned from any new place you go to. Walking amongst the townsfolk might give you a new perspective of them. No. It won't. She want I to wonder get what happened to you, Anne. She was attached to something or someone or some place and she got taken away or got destroyed or something. That's what I'm getting at. But for now, uh, I'm going to call this here. So I hope you guys have a good day, night, week, month of your lives. And may the stars forever guide your path, forever might lead you into the future. Bye-bye, everybody.